Attention passengers, we've now reached our destination. We hope you enjoyed the flight and have a nice day. It's another busy morning in the BLR airport in Bengaluru. Once again, welcome on board. Every few minutes, the precise takeoffs and landings mark its reputation as one of the fastest growing airports in the world. With 693 flights daily, it is the third busiest airport in the country. And now it has another feather in its cap. A brand new 2.5 million square feet terminal which takes the capacity of the airport to 52 million passengers a year. The aim, to make BLR Airport the new gateway to South India. Bengaluru, the capital city of Karnataka in South India. It's one of the fastest growing cities in the Asia-Pacific region and attracts millions of visitors every year. And the gateway to the city is the Kempegodo International Airport Bengaluru, also known as BLR Airport. The airport serves the most important need of the city from a business standpoint. It serves as the hub of connectivity of this city to the rest of the world. BLR Airport began operations in 2008, and soon it was one of the busiest airports in the country. By 2015, the main runway was reaching saturation point. When we celebrated our 10th anniversary, right, in 2018, we had tripled in traffic volume from when we started. So we had grown from about 9.5 million in the first year to 27 million. To cater to this growth, a $2 billion expansion plan was conceived. A vision began to take shape. If you had picked up a single dimension to celebrate Bengaluru by defining the vision for Terminal 2, I think we would have not done justice to it. So therefore, uh, we decided to pick up four such dimensions, which eventually became the four pillars of the design of uh, Terminal 2. Terminal in the garden, technology, art, and sustainability. An army of experts from within the country and outside were brought in to build the new dream. Infrastructure veteran Tom Shimin was given the mammoth task of steering the project. I worked for many, many years for the Walt Disney Company. Surprisingly enough, airports and theme parks are very, very similar. Is that you don't see all the background that goes to make, you know, your experience. In 2018, the first step towards transforming the expansion from design and blueprint to action finally began. It's a scale of massive proportions across different facets. There is the terminal building, uh, which itself is a 2.5 million uh, square feet terminal. Then there is a new South Paddle runway. The runway is a 45 meter wide runway with 15 meter shoulders on both sides. But there's also a lot of other associated infrastructure. As the billion dollar project begins, the team braces for the slew of challenges ahead. The deadline is set for completion by March 2021, and the team must work at an unrelenting pace if they have to meet it. They need to put the first phase of construction in place before the rainy season arrives. Landscaping was going to be one of the key elements in giving Terminal 2 its unique structure. We've designed Terminal 2 around a core pillar of being a terminal in a garden environment. You have gardens inside terminals, but the fact that the terminal itself is nestled in the, in the middle of a garden makes this very special. The idea was to create a one-of-a-kind swathe of greenery that would pay homage to Bengaluru's reputation of being a garden city. Soon, the concept of the garden bloomed into making it a forest belt. The forest belt is designed to be a lush sanctuary, spanning four acres, home to over 2,500 plants across nine mounds that recreate the rolling hills of the Western Ghats. We decided to make sure that we adopt 180 rare, endangered and threatened species of plants. We went out to various sacred forests, various ecological areas of India, handpicked plants that were actually on the threatened list and brought them here with a guarantee that they would be given a safe haven for them to survive for the next few years.
On the field, the team is in the midst of preparing the ground for creating this forest belt. These mounds, this type of configuration has never been done before in the world. So we're doing something for the first time. So anytime you do something for the first time, there's a learning curve. Was it meeting the compaction requirements that we required? Engineers were very precise. We like to have everything down in terms of the exact millimeter, et cetera. And so we're trying to work with a contractor to come up with a way in which that we can achieve that architectural vision in terms of what this should look like, but also do it in such a way that allows us to gain some efficiencies in terms of how we're going around it. Because we have to speed up. Where time is ticking, you know, uh, every minute, every hour, every day. We're having approximately 800 trees that have to be moved and we store them in our nursery. The transporting of the trees themselves would be a gigantic task. Some of these trees are between 600 to 800 years old. In another part of the terminal, the team was bracing for another daunting challenge. The unique vision of architecturally making it a terminal in a garden includes the nature element being brought into the terminal building. Nearly 1,000 structural columns need to be erected before they can be camouflaged by bamboo. l and our big contractors, 75 years working in India, working around the globe, they say we're gonna do the 12 meter column in uh, three attempts. We look at it, no, you won't do that, you're gonna do it in one. So what we did, we designed the tallest self formwork ever done by LNT, 12 meters self-supported. We developed special mix of the concrete, which is a self-compacted concrete, and on every column we gained six days. We had about 957 columns. Take the thousand by six, that's a 6,000 days. We did 12 columns a day, divide with it in about 100 days. The mammoth expansion plan of the BLR airport in Bengaluru is picking up steam and all hands are on deck to ensure that the project sticks to its deadline. While the terminal is being readied, the roadworks team is facing its own challenges. To increase the capacity of the airport terminal, the roads leading to it also needs to be expanded to accommodate the growing traffic. Currently, we have a main access road that's a two plus two road. We're expanding that to five plus five. We are putting in additional roads on either side. We are just now starting to work in front of um, T1. And this is probably going to become the biggest disruption. And it's one, probably our most complicated project is getting all of these roads built while we're still getting over 35 million passengers a year to T1 without really impacting their ability to get here and get to the airport and have a stress-free trip while going through a major construction zone. Since 2019, vehicular traffic to the airport has been rapidly surging. Not only did the ramp need to be widened, but so did the trumpet-shaped interchange flyover. This flyover leads to the airport and the national highway to Hyderabad. Expanding this would entail not disrupting any traffic. The only way to do this was to make the concrete segments at a casting yard and then put them into place using a launching girder. Each segment is attached to the next, using steel reinforcements. By using a modular design, they expand the flyover, section by section at the trumpet interchange, the main gateway to the airport. The challenge is compounded by the fact that this stretch spans over a bustling national highway and an active railway line very complicated, you know, staging of getting these projects complete so we can do other projects. To widen the existing three kilometer long ramp from two lanes to four without disrupting traffic, both on the ramp and below, the team needs to be extremely efficient. They cut away the crash barriers at the edges of the ramp, widen and tarmac the road, and then fit the barriers back in. 
For sections spanning the highway and railway line, it takes weeks of coordination with multiple agencies to secure the approvals needed to divert traffic. And when approvals do come in, the team has to work quickly in short windows to build a new bridge adjacent to the existing one at the terminal building. Even as work progresses on the new terminal, one of the early milestones would be the creation of the new runway. The brand new runway would make BLR Airport the first in South India to have a parallel runway system. This would allow flights to take off and land simultaneously. It also allows flights to operate in poor visibility and foggy weather. The validation flight, conducted to certify that all aviation norms were in order, was the first step in making it operational. To see this happening, it's, it's a big thing for the team to come together because they've been working on it. Um, it they said it's a very tangible event to show that the project, you know, all your work has come together. A part of the sustainable design was to have a large skylight roof which would allow plenty of natural daylight to come through so that it reduces the overall energy requirements. But the roofing had some inherent challenges. We have a large roof system. It's an it's a absolutely phenomenal design in terms of the skylight elements within it. Um, but when you have that type of a roofing structure, uh, that type of a building footprint, it means that during the rains is a tremendous amount of water that needs to go someplace. And for us, we have to help control where that water goes. The worst thing that can happen to us is if we're not prepared for monsoon, water comes inside the building, we have parts of the building that potentially are damaged, reworked, etc. we have to get it out. So for us, it's focusing on how do we make sure we have all the supporting infrastructure in place in advance of when we get that first rainfall for monsoon. When the monsoons finally arrive, the teams are relieved. Everything has worked out according to plan. Everything seemed to be under control. Then, the unimaginable happened. The global pandemic hit. When we heard for the first time about Corona happening, we were saying like, well, it won't happen to us. In the 21st of March, we received a government note that the old construction work will be suspended. To be honest, I've never had a force majeure event, as they call it. So, you know, one of these active gods, and they're extraordinarily rare. To have one of this magnitude is just, you know, inconceivable. What made it worse? were multiple waves of the pandemic which disrupted progress. Finally, after four months, the team was able to resume. The construction always, there's ups and downs. We're back to work now. Obviously, we're having uh, different timelines now because we've been out of basically work or daily activities for four to, four to five months. So yes, that's impact us. What we did to create more days, everyone's saying in a week there is a seven days. Okay, that's true, but there's also seven nights. And we end up working from a 29th of September, seven days around the clock. Soon, the momentum is back again. The team is raring to go and all the finishing touches are being put before the operations trials can start. The project are changing the direction. So it's coming from a very heavy construction works, more into finesse, finishes. The next five to six months are going to be exciting stressful, emotional, validating. The transformation and the activation that's gonna be going on the next five to six months on this project is gonna be incredible. And even every day as you walk out there, you start to see uh, you know, the unfolding of the final finished product. And you start to see you know, how everything's coming together and the beauty that this, this airport and terminal really is gonna have.
piece by piece the iconic Terminal 2 of BLR Airport comes together, like a well-designed jigsaw puzzle. Even as the construction is reaching the finishing line, the operations team gets their act together. What we decided to do in, um, for Terminal 2 is that we wanted to cut short the time uh, required for trials and transitions. So we decided that we'll work alongside with the construction. There are four major flows um, that we look at in terms of airport operations. Firstly, the passenger and employee flow, passenger baggage flow, aircraft flow, and then finally the cargo flow. So these are the four major flows, and all our systems, processes, technology, uh, operation procedures are all tailored around to make all these flows as efficient as possible. We brought in all the stakeholders to go through each and every trial, and we created scenarios. We had a total of about 300 scenarios, different scenarios. We could bring in passengers. We brought in what, almost 1,000 passengers over the course of uh, two months. We printed boarding passes. We gave them dummy bags to check in. The bags went through. We gave them tags. They went all the way to the boarding gate and tried the boarding and then came up to arrival. So we managed to go through our processes. We also realized that some of our planning and design stage uh, was based on certain assumptions. When you bring in live passengers, you realize that some of the assumptions are not correct. So we had to switch, we had to tweak, we had to change. All the pillars on which the terminal was designed are now becoming visible. And the end result is beginning to look awe-inspiring. One of the pillars on which the aesthetics of the terminal was being designed was art. That airports are a crucible of emotions lent itself easily to the artistic vision of the terminal. Art at T2 is based on two themes, Karnataka's rich heritage and culture, and Haratha Natya Shastra's Norasa or Nine Emotions. The whole objective has been to create a space that houses works of art that touches people something that's going to be seen by a whole range of people. It's not your typical gallery or your museum going crowd. It has to be something that makes it inclusive. People have to be a part of it. The terminal in a garden true to its name has become a living, breathing, biodiversity hotspot with 600,000 living plants in the terminal building. One of the most unique elements of BLR Airport are the, the bells and veils. The bell, inspired by South Indian temple bells and the veils inspired by onion baskets used in North Karnataka. Each, both an architectural and engineering wonder. These bells and veils have between 600 to 900 carefully made components. These massive beauties weigh between 1.5 tons to 6 tons, hanging from the ceiling and were a challenge themselves to install. We've chosen an audacious target of putting a ceiling full of plants how do you maintain them for the next 20 years? So we had to bring in technology here to ensure that these plants, these bells and whales can be uh, irrigated without a single drop of water falling on someone's head. One vision was to make Terminal 2 as resource efficient as possible. This vast campus of 4,000 acres is powered 100% by renewable energy, mostly by solar, but certain amount of wind as well. The invisible, all-pervasive thread of the new terminal is technology. When BLR Airport opened in 2008, it was already the most technologically advanced airport in India. With T2, the vision was to make technology the driver of every aspect of the airport. A network of 3,300 CCTV cameras are quick to spot growing queues and open new counters. The baggage handling system can analyze up to 4,500 bags an hour, that's 75 bags a minute. An automated irrigation system can water all the plants in the terminal with a touch of a button. We've got IoT sensors embedded into every aspect of the whole terminal, monitoring the humidity, temperature, hydration, nutrition of everything, all the plants, and then delivering the micro doses of nutrients and uh, hydration as in men require. As the D-Day draws near, 
the teams gear up to ensure that the years of preparation will stand the test of actual operations. The journey has come from a functional need of a traveler to an experiential need of the traveler. In the beginning, it was more of the functional need. You will have a duty-free, we have some tea, coffee concept. But over the years, it has become more of an experience center. Passengers will love this terminal. There is so much to do in this terminal. This is one of those terminals where we say experiences like never before is what you can actually get here which makes it a destination that you will want to explore. Once you're in, um, the sheer visual scale of this airport is quite uh, special. But this is both the end and the beginning, because the terminal is just the first step to the future. The mission is to make the BLR airport not only the new gateway to South India, but the next super hub. Super hub from the perspective of connectivity, super hub from bringing uh, people from different parts of India to Bengaluru to connect to the rest of the world, uh, super hub from the kind of direct international connections that it will have. All this together will uh, genuinely position BLR to being a super hub of the future.